G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is an M91 light machine gun. Players of Call of Duty Modern Warfare will probably recognize this thing instantly because it's a fairly distinctive weapon and it is a direct port from that game. I skimmed over the wiki and it's basically a one-to-one -one port. Anything you can attach onto the gun in its Call of Duty incarnation, you can attach in Fallout 4, which I think is good. A little bit of attention to detail there. Also, the perk system that you're able to grant your soldier that you're playing as in Call of Duty has been approximated here with yet another attachment point. This is all pretty standard for Warfighters Workshop, and what is also standard is that this thing is way too loud, so I had to bring down the volume of everything so it wouldn't deafen you whilst I'm firing it, but even then it might still be a little bit loud after that. I'll adjust if necessary, looking back at my footage if I need to. So what you're looking at here is just a belt-fed LMG chambering the 308 rounds because that's the closest thing you can get to the 7.62 rounds, they're about the same size. I think the grains in the 308 are a little bit more, a little bit more kick to them. I think that's the difference there. But we'll get into the customization, and you'll change. You can change the barrel, which is good because I don't actually like the look of this. The back end of this thing actually does look a little bit like an M240 Bravo. Now, look, I've wanted to have an M240 Bravo in Fallout 4 for ages, so this is a fairly close approximation. Um, if we fix the barrel on the front, I can pretend it's like a futuristic version. I don't think any of the barrels look appealing, but I think this end of the gun looks alright. I'm guessing uh, just that's more of a, I guess, aesthetic taste for stuff that looks a little bit too futuristic, I think. Um, so we'll go down here and we'll get an advanced receiver V2 to get that modernized look on it. That's good. 217 damage, pretty nice. Legendary effect is there in the second spot. We will not be using that. And you can chuck a laser on, so it improves accuracy whilst aiming down sights for the TAC laser. And the 5 megawatt green laser improves hip fire accuracy. Let's do that. Very nice. And you can chuck some sights on it. And what I like about these ones is I can pick out, <laughs> I can pick out what these are in real life, but they've given them generic names and made them just different enough to make sure they wouldn't get sued or would haven't haven't paying any bloody licensing fees. That's a name point, obviously. That's a PKA, is it PKS or PKA? That's a Russian holo site right there, and one of these is like one of those Eotex, but it isn't. Where is it? Well, that one's got a magnifier on it, but you can tell that it's like a generic one that you'd find in a bootleg China shop. They're not quite there, but you know what they're supposed to be. So it, I, I guess it does hold that tactical thing about it. Although um, maybe they're supposed to be like improved versions of the sites because Call of Duty Modern Warfare takes place a little bit more in the future. I can't resist the hollow site here, so I'm going to whack that on. And you can change the ammunition, which is actually the magazine size. We'll go for a 150 round belt, which says weight increase. It doesn't affect the weight though, but the aesthetics are, it sort of matches the barrel, so we'll do that. And you can change the rear grip. You can wrap some tape around it and it'll give you slightly different uh, recoil stats. So this one keeps you steady and on target, helps with recoil, less steady. You know what, I think we'll be fighting recoil with this thing the most. Steadiness doesn't really uh, bother me. I'm guessing these are the same descriptions pulled from the Call of Duty thing because stability in these in this game, there's not really that much in the way. Unless it's talking about how fast the recoil bloom will reset. Or the spread will reset, that's the one. Um, yeah, not really sure that works out. Now, you can change the barrels, and longest barrel will give you 203 range, but not an increase of accuracy. Or rather, an increase of accuracy, but not enough for the game to acknowledge it. And it says, this is heavy, but it isn't. It's actually the same weight, and we've already moved over to the uh, muzzle things here, because we can attach a muzzle. So we can chuck a gigantic suppressor on there, like a monolithic one which appears to be the exact same. So just, I guess, a, a choice of whichever you think looks the best, I suppose. But that'll increase our damage thanks to Ace Operator, so I feel like that's a good idea. And you can change the stock on it, so we can finally get rid of that um, stock-looking stock <laughs> factory version. Yeah, let's go for this one, the ultralight one. Let's reduce the weight. But it doesn't, though. Well, that's interesting. You can also have the sock off completely. That's kind of interesting. And we can go for a few perks here. So I'm going to have to read through these. Blast shield is uh, less damage from explosions. Heavy weight is probably just a carry weight boost. 
Ready up is regenerate action points faster. I'm going to go with that one. HP regeneration, don't worry about that. Marathon increases the amount of action points. Shouldn't that decrease the amount of action points when you sprint? I feel like that would make a little bit more sense. Uh, support your run and gun play style. Although you can use those action points in VAT, so that's pretty good. And timing of aim downsides is halved. Generally, guns in this game are quick aiming downsides, so unless I've adjusted that to make that more worth it, we'll go through that. Fortifies rad resist, nuclear born. Radiation, not really that much of a hazard. We're not going to be taking on Children of Adam today. Faster reload is actually quite good on this thing because the reload's slow because it's a belt feed. You've got to feed it everything through. It's a little bit of time to reload, so that's a good one. Hip firing is actually quite good as well. Don't mind that one. Perceptive is just VATS enhanced, but it doesn't give you the preset. Pre, uh, prefix, sorry. And then resilience is falling damage negated. By how much? Who knows? And stalker is... Nimble. It's just nimble. Aim down sights, move faster. And the prestige ranks are just extra damage boosts. I actually kind of like that. That's kind of cute. And that's about it. Now, there are a bunch of uniques you can craft on the chemistry workbench um, under weapons M91. There's a drawing animation. And I've placed them all on the bed. And these are what are going to be my other ones. And they're actually like proper uniques in the game. There's the aim down sight speed. So there you go. There's use for quick draw. But. I guess we'll get started now, and oh, oh, it's such a 240 vibe. I like these animations. We'll, we'll go and shoot something now, I promise. Weapon on the back. Yeah, baby. Looks good. Righto, so here we are outside the immersive plaza, and this is what it looks like in first person. You've already seen it, but taking a quick look at it again, this looks a lot like an M240 Bravo right now. It's, it's so close. Anyways, probably ought to show you what the unique epic ones are. So, this one's called River Sticks. It's got the Grim Reaper and a white paint and a tombstone. It's also got the Wounding Prefix, powerful on a weapon that is automatic. That's a 25 extra damage, no matter what, per shot. It'll just be slowly going, though, because they're going to bleed out to lose health. You can also attach foregrips onto those. I don't think I showed those off earlier, but you will hold on to them in first and third person, and they will help out with recoil somewhat. There's the one I made on a workbench. This one's called Foxglove. It's got the lucky prefix, so we want to use this thing a little bit in VATS to make the best use out of that. It's also got a suppressor and a scope, but only a powerful piercing auto receiver V2, so not the most powerful thing I've got. This one's the Furious one. It's got saw blades, red, and... Yeah, the Furious Legendary effect on a weapon like this is going to be devastatingly powerful because in this game, you get plus 15% multiplicative for every consecutive shot. And when you're firing a projectile weapon that has a high ammo capacity and a fast fire rate, you're going to stack that damage on very quickly. You can easily get 1,000 a a plus damage per shot on this thing if you can shoot at something long enough to gather that damage up, which we'll see pretty later during the video. This one is called Burning Fuse. It's painted like it's something out of Portal. It's made of GLaDOS, and it's got the explosive prefix and a stubby grip. And this one's called The Hazard. It's green and looks like it's a bit rough around the edges, got no stock or sights, and the assassin's prefix there, so very useful against gunners, quite like it. Anyways, we'll get started against these gunners now, and bugger off. So someone's making my phone vibrate, won't be having that in my recording. So we'll get started on these guys. We'll go through these ones one by one, and we'll sort of pull back here just so I can maintain these sneak criticals. And that guy's picking up. Keep him nice and pinned down. There's one all the way up there. Don't think I'll get there. And, ooh, almost in danger. Hide in the bushes. Be like a rattlesnake in the bushes. So the suppressed 240 Bravo in the bushes. Okay. Never mind, we're on now. We'll get to stealth later, I guess. But it's not like we really need stealth. This thing hits hard enough to actually give me a good amount of damage versus these gunners. The spread, I think, is bad. It's a, it's a bit out there. Um, it's more exaggerated when we're using scoped weapons. Anyways, we've reloaded that one. Uh, if I shoot this thing now using the scope and I aim it at a target, there's a lot of recoil that's happening. The weapon's bouncing around quite a lot. And if you, if you pay close attention to the traces, they're just sort of going all over the place. So definitely this is not the most accurate one, which you'd think having the lucky prefix would warrant a little bit of accuracy. But you know what? Let's get a little bit of gun fill action happening here. We'll use some of these criticals. The fourth will be an automatic critical. Actually, I'm going to leave it. I think we'll be okay. 
Never mind. I'm gonna crit this one though. That's a brigadier. There we go. And this next one will be a critical. Very nice. We only got a couple more bullets left in this thing, so we'll expend them as fast as possible. And then we'll switch over to number three. This one is the furious one. So we'll see if this actually works at all. Hopefully it does. It'd be great if it does. Well, doesn't seem to be working. Huh, I'm going to unequip and re-equip it just to see if it actually does anything. It'd be a huge disappointment if it gave me the furious prefix and then it just didn't do anything about it. That's an MG42. Where are you? Not you. Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? It might be any of those. So, you know what? I'm going to go for three crits on these blokes. It was you. All right. I, I got the right target. But you know what? I'm not going to back out of these criticals now. I'll take him out. Get a couple of quick kills here. That's a grenade coming in. A Molotov. And we might get into Nerd Rage here in a second. That might be it, actually. It's kind of fitting to have a Furious. That's a Manchester, don't have to worry about him. Eh, we'll get to him later. But, yeah, kind of fitting to go into Nerd Rage with a Furious weapon. And, ooh, Molotov coming in. Can I shoot that out at the air? I can as well. And it explodes like a frag grenade if I do. That's kind of weird. Let's go over to fourth one, which I need to reload for reasons. I didn't shoot this thing at all. I guess I just didn't preload it. Anyways, the... Prefix here should be helpful against the uh, gunners. It'll help offset... We're in Nerd Rage again. We must have killed enough to heal off the damage. That's good. But probably won't happen again. We've got to play as a little bit more safe now. So what we'll do is we'll run around the back. And realistically, if I could get back into sneak mode, uh, if I could find a suppressed variant, we'll go back over to this one. That's not what I wanted. That's also not what I wanted. Just play it a little bit slow, and then wham, pop out and get some nice stealth kills there. Okay, that's pretty good. Don't really like the uh, scope there. I feel like having that extra zoom in is a detriment, and that's an MG. Give me that. All right. Now you can't use them against me. Let's rock, says the gunner, slowly getting up from his sitting pose. All right, we'll keep coming around here. W keys playing up again. It happens in the heat. Anyways... Keep going. Very nice. We get a good old back rage here, just like you would an Operation Locker if you were good at infantry. Let me tell you something, I'm not. The chaos in it, not good. I'm more of a, a person of order. I like to organize my ways of attacks. That's why I always tank all the time. Also, it makes my kill-death ratio look good, and that's, that's what really matters at the end of the day. And if you think it's win-loss ratio, or just how much you help your team... You are clearly wrong. Alright, so we'll do a little door breach here. Maybe I should have a little bit of jet in me, because generally when you kick down a door in Call of Duty, there's always these, like, almost cliche slowdown moments. And that guy just walked in front of an automatic firing belt fed thing that fires 308 rounds. Clever gunners. Cutting them down so easily. Really making it feel like this thing... Just, it just cuts through whatever damage resistance they have, especially when they've got a 50% damage, or I've got a 50% damage penalty on very hard difficulty. So you can imagine what this thing would be like without those incurred penalties, but I feel like it feels like it's, it's strong. It's a proper endgame weapon here, and maybe they made it this strong to make it feel a little bit more like the Call of Duty weapons where the time to kill is lightning fast so i guess that's what that's all about we'll uh, try to keep warm in front of this fire and i guess we'll move on Alrighty, so i've turned the rain off just so the vision's a little bit clearer and this only got 120 rounds in the magazine this is supposed to be the wounding thing so the question is will we see any of that actually happening no i feel like i'm being lied to that's really bizarre. You'd think that actually give you... Like, they've got the prefixes and everything, but just not the legendary effects. So, with that in mind, I guess we'll just go back over to the suppress thing. And just shoot them like this. Yes, that's the way to go. Feel the power. We'll go for some headshots here. Crushed him. He's gonna fall on that stick. Ha! <laughs> well, maybe we don't need all of the legendary effects after all. Bit of stealth commandoing 
with this thing certainly does the job. But you know what? I'm going to go and grab them because I want them, damn it. I need these legendary effects because reasons. To be honest, I probably should have suspected something was up because none of them had the legendary effect descriptions under the name of the thing. See, the Assassins one does it now, but if I go and actually find Assassins, yep, there it is. So, I've just been telling lies. Everything I knew was a lie for that 15 or so minutes, so, yeah. <laughs> there goes my credibility. Alright, just to drive the point home, I've found the biggest, scariest, most tankiest thing in the wasteland. You see a giant silhouette there. It's the Myler Queen Broodmother. No sneak criticals here, we're doing this full furious mode. Look at that damage go. 300, 400, 500, 6, 7, and mutation, and dead. 2000 damage a shot. And we're firing this fast. Yeah, that's beyond what we're getting for sneak criticals, so... Wait. It's very rude to all of the arachnophobes in the audience. Are you scared of spiders, anyone? See, that one's alright. That one's just standing there. Anyways, it's more insects coming in. The stingwings coming in hot. Coming in for the flanks. Bunch of mole rats, too. Plenty of things to deal with here. Hit them like Rambo. Just gotta hip fire this thing until you hit. Easy when they're up close. <laughs> Mole rats. They're so broken. Just teleport everywhere. I reckon the the floating health bar mod just makes it even more apparent than they're teleporting. Also, I'm running low in 308s. That's okay. We can always get more with console commands. Yeah. I don't know why I took a screenshot. I've, that's F12, and my stop recording button is F11. Alright, so we're going to be using the new and improved portal gun with actual explosive prefix on it this time. So, this should be fun. We'll be starting this off with a sneak critical because, you know, we're not, we're not going to be using the furious one. That would be a little bit too easy. Now, that's a pretty good amount of damage for that first sneak critical 579 on that hit and a little bit extra for that there's uh, explosive bullets that's pretty good and I want to get to using the uh, the legendary uh, wounding one as well but we might have a little bit of trouble with ammo here so if I switch over to my explosive one that's I think this one's it it's got the Grim Reaper on it I wonder if we'll actually have anything in the way of extra numbers showing up. You can tell that his health is going down ever so slowly. If the situation gets really dire in terms of ammo, I will switch over to the Furious because I just don't have a lot in here. I probably should have replenished my sources. We'll try to keep him off us by keeping on shooting him, getting the cheeky staggers here and there, and almost be tated. I think his health is going down ever so slowly. I think it's actually more efficient to use the explosive one. That's not it. Portal gun away. Get him, GLaDOS. Get him, potato attached to the gun thing. That that happened in Portal 2, right? Did I just shoot his sonic thing out of the air? It can make bullets explode. It must be a solid projectile. Whoa, that was close. He almost hit us, but he actually got staggered by the explosive projectile there, which hurt us a little bit, but um, it would have hurt a lot more if he actually punched us now, wouldn't it? So, I'll take that as an absolute win. Alright. So, we're doing pretty well here. We've even got the Mysterious Stranger. Is he going to actually shoot? He totally whiffed it. That ah, run, run, run. That's Nerd Rage. That's good, though. We'll get this fight over and done with. It's in slow motion. We'll chase those headshots. Keep going. Almost there. Getting that AP back. Can get some quick little criticals if we want. I'm going for it. I'm going for these criticals. I I just simply have to. Oh, it's going to be close. Vat's defense don't let me down. We've got one more critical. Can this do it? Nope, it can't. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was close. But I leveled up, so it wasn't actually that close. And, well, you gave me a tough fight. You're probably a bit salty, so... I never said I wasn't toxic. Probably wouldn't be referred to as a teabag here now, would it? Anyways, so 
I think we'll call it there. That there was an M91. It's a COD port, so I can't award points for the weapon looking good because it was done by some professional developer somewhere, wherever the bloody studio is, but they've made it work pretty well in Fallout 4. I think it's actually a fairly solid weapon. It's fun to use, and if you've got any particular strong attachment to the weapon in Call of Duty, you can bring it in Fallout 4 and it'll be equally as good. But I actually don't know anything about this weapon. I've never played uh, the Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So if you've made it this far into the video and if you've ever used this thing in the Call of Duty game, do you have any interesting anecdotes to share? Any interesting stories about using it? Or do you hate the weapon? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Also, if you're in this far, leave a like because the YouTube al algorithm doesn't like me anymore.